scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. One of the things that we must crave for in the presence of God is not just to hear a preacher speak intelligently, um, not just to admire the moments, but it's important for us to understand according to Hebrews 11 and verse 6, the Bible says, He that cometh unto God must believe first that he exists, and then number two, that he is the rewarder, not of those who are around where he is, those that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. And so, as much as the church is a place of excitement, we must be careful so that we do not drift into destruction and waste prophetic moments. Hallelujah. I truly believe that this is a night for an encounter for someone. And if that is you, shout a loud amen. amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, help us again. We submit to you and we thank you for grace. By the power of the Holy Spirit, lift us, help us, build us, transform us. Grant us superior understanding of your ways. And in the name of Jesus, let our lives command results to the glory of the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Every time God wants to help a man, he helps his understanding. Every time God wants to help a man sustainably, he helps his understanding. He may birth a miracle to manage the situation at the moment, but the way God really helps people is to help your understanding. That is why the Holy Spirit is called a helper. And his primary assignment is to bring to us understanding. He's called the spirit of truth. It says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are a number of things I want us to discuss tonight. And um, wherever we stop tonight, we pray. And then we continue tomorrow. I'm teaching on the laws of exploits. The laws of exploits. What does it take to not just produce signs and wonders, but to become a sign and a wonder yourself? The Bible is a compendium of limitless possibilities. And God has spoken great things concerning the saints. But whether or not we step into the experience of God's desire, is left to us he's given us his word he's given us his love he's given us the holy spirit he's made available unto us everything that pertains unto life and godliness hallelujah and so it's up to us now to yield to the spirit of god and to yield to his word so that our understanding be quickened and then we obtain grace to walk in the experience of that which turns us into signs and wonders. The first thing I want to talk about is the necessity for extraordinary results. Um, results are not everything in the kingdom, 
but it is unwise and childish to downplay results. Let me start from that point. Are we together? Results as the excelling of the believer is concerned, as far as the glorification of the Christ is concerned. So my first, I want to start from this point. It is important for you and I to understand that there is a major role that results have to play in our lives, in the advancement of God's program, in the conversion of sinners. Are we together? It is very important. You may have heard me say that results are evangelists. There is a kind of sermon only results can preach. And there is an audience that has been designed to only listen to results. Hallelujah. It is important that believers produce extraordinary results. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Herein is our Father glorified. The Bible says, When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Ephesians 2.10 We are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Are we still together? Ephesians 3.10 to the intent that now unto principalities and powers might be made manifest by the church, the manifold, multifaceted wisdom of God. John chapter 4 and verse 48, Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well and said, except ye see miraculous signs and wonders, he says, ye will not believe. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you must settle it for a fact that the only way God's program makes tangible progress in this world that seeks for a sign is when your life commands ever-increasing consistent results. Nobody leaves what works. Hallelujah. You can argue about what works. You can walk in denial, but nobody Technology has not invented a mechanism to ignore results. No. Everywhere you see results, even if it is the burning bush, you cannot ignore it. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to appreciate God's intent in conferences like this. That he wants to show us his ways. He desires that our lives command results. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13. Jesus was speaking and he said, Ye are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. Profound description. He says, But if the salt has lost its savor or saltiness, wherewith shall it be made salty is good for nothing but to be thrown underfoot and trampled by men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a lampstand, a candlestick, so that it gives light to all who are in the room. Then verse 16 says, let your light, now that you know you are the light, he says, let your light. It's another way of saying, let your life so shine before men. Not before spirits, not before angels. He wants your lights to so shine, so shine, shine to the extent that you cannot ignore it. He says that men may see your good works and glorify your father. And glorify your father. This is how they glorify your father. When your life becomes a living epistle, a capture of the multifaceted dimensions of God's power, God's wisdom, God's grace. I'm praying for someone already. Whatever keeps you ordinary, that your life has not become a testament of God's faithfulness, provoking people to love Jesus, provoking people to serve him. In the name of Jesus, I pray from tonight that you step into the supernatural. You step into supernatural living by the Spirit. Jesus met a woman at the well. Hallelujah. 
And then they began a discussion. She perceived that he was a prophet and she began to ask him several questions. The Bible says that woman was so impacted by that encounter, she left her fetcher, left her pot, and the Bible says she ran immediately to the city. Her limitations left immediately. She forgot that she was once a woman who nobody would even listen to. That encounter brought confidence to her. She could dare people she once ran away from and said, come see a man, forget about me. I have become an advocate of a man. Come see a man that told me everything I've done. Her witness was so compelling. The Bible says they came, not because they believed Jesus. Her witness, they knew the woman. Her witness was too compelling to be ignored. The Bible says they came. Now when they met Jesus, they said about this, that we now believe, not because of what she has said, we have seen for ourselves. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, and with great power gave witness of the resurrection. The apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, great grace was upon them all. With great power power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus hallelujah it's important that we command signs and wonders it is important that our lives become an effulgence of the supernatural do you believe this yeah. in Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 the Bible says Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto the people. The next verse says the people listen with one accord to the things that Philip speak, hearing, notice, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. Hearing, if it is God's business, people must hear and see. The world is tired of hearing, they need to see. That's why I was blessed by that song, manifest your power, let us see it. It says, oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Are we together now? Yes. I made up my mind as a covenant with my destiny that I will never live an ordinary life. No. And this is not just about some human ambition. I found out that if you truly love the Lord, you will hate an ordinary life. The reason is because your whole life's mission is to project Jesus and your passion, if you truly love him, must be to give the best presentation. Are we together now? Yeah. Nothing beats the supernatural. Nothing beats genuine results in representing Jesus. When John came and sent the disciples in offense and anger and said, come and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? Jesus did not answer. He told the people, watch me. He began to lay hands on the sick. He began to heal. He began to do all of these things and said, go back and tell John what you have seen. What sign was given to him when the Messiah shows up? The Messiah was not supposed to be a noisemaker. He was supposed to be a miracle worker, a witness, a testament of God's love. The Bible never said, for God so loved that he spake, for God so loved that he gave. The greatest way to show love is in the demonstration, more than speaking. When I came to you, he said, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power, that your faith will not be founded upon Sophia, the wisdom of men, but upon the power of God. Again, I pray for someone in the name of Jesus Christ, the grace that causes men to evolve until they walk in the supernatural in experience, may it rest upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so it's important for you to know that God desires and he is glorified when you produce results, when you bear fruit. Jesus frowned at fruitlessness and demonstrated it in Mark chapter 11 when he caused a fig tree. The Bible tells us that he came to a fig tree and he saw the fig tree. I thought Jesus would be motivated that at least it had green leaves. There was no sparing. The Bible says immediately he cursed it and said no fruit will come out of you again. And by the next day it had withered. The merciful God didn't show mercy for lack of results. Do you know why? Because the tree was connected to the earth. All the resources to produce results were within its reach. And he said you are taken from the earth. There is no excuse for not producing results. 
he caused it by disconnecting it to the earth and it withered I want to see the Lord glorified in my life. I want to see the nations love Jesus because of my life. I want to see someone saved because they look at my life. Yes. And whatever it would take as far as being the best representation of God's possibilities that my life can capture, that becomes my project. Do you believe this? Yes. All I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted high all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you you to be glorified for you to be lifted they saw the apostles the early church these were ordinary men ladies and gentlemen but they encountered the power of the holy spirit they encountered the wisdom of god and their lives were strange they they became living epistles in experience they would enter cities as single individuals and shut down the cities without going to a radio station shut down the cities for jesus not for the intent of making a name my god these were men that lived like gods upon the earth if it is true that you love the Lord, it's important to begin to re-examine the reason why your life is not producing results. This is beyond making progress. No. This is passion for God demonstrated in the dexterity of your life that it becomes impossible for anybody to look at your life and forget God. Your life becomes a... It compels men to remember God. If they try to ignore him, God sends you to their face. And the moment they see you, because you have become a mirror, you compel them to remember that there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Let me make one more statement. It has become an anthem in my life. It's a revelation that God gave me, Reverend Sam. That the end of the believer's journey with God is that your life becomes in experience the manifestation of the glory of God. This is God's goal for every one of us. When God begins the journey with a believer, listen to me. God's goal for the believer is not just heaven. No. God's goal for the believer is not just healing. No. Everybody Jesus healed still died. God's goal for the believer Everybody who ate the bread still perished. They still were hungry. Are we together? God's goal, it's important for you to know. When you begin business with God, to what end? Why is he intentional like Moses Bliss sang? What is behind his passion and his obsession? What is behind his vulnerability for man? To the point that the psalmist will say, what is man? Could there be something you have hidden in man that man himself does not understand? What is man that you are mindful of him? Have you lost your creativity? Can't you fade away this species and build another one? Why a, the man will, will reject God and say we reject you and God will give them over to their enemies. Later he will come by himself. Hmm. What is man? Are we learning already? So it's important for you to know that God's goal for my life and for your life is that you evolve in experience until you become a manifestation of the glory of God. The glory of God. Don't forget that word glory. The glory of anything is a description of why that thing is admirable, why that thing is valuable. So when you talk about the glory of a thing, you have to break it to the various compositions Describing the glory of a thing is justifying why it is expensive or justifying why it is desirable. The glory of an expensive phone is in describing its features. You have to tell us why that phone is one million, why it is two million, why is it not a hundred thousand? So you begin to talk about the features like speed, 
you know, uh, portability and other things. So when you talk about the glory of God, you are talking about all the compositions in God that makes him that glorious, that majestic, that wise. The glory of God is a compendium of his favor, his wisdom, his power. To really understand the glory of God, you have to break all of those facets of God and examine them as much as you can. And this is God's goal for the believer. That my life becomes a capture of the glory of God, manifested in his wisdom, manifested in his power, all of those dimensions. But there are three. There are three components that if they are missing in your life, we cannot say your life is carrying glory. Glory is a capture of many dimensions of God. But there are three of them that represent the pillars of glory. The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. That is the first pillar of glory, wisdom. Everywhere you find glory, you first find wisdom. Number two, neither the mighty man or the powerful man glory in his might. So we see power. And then the third is wealth, riches both from a secular standpoint and in the spirit. Every time you describe glory, regardless what parameters you use, these three must be represented. They were found in Solomon's life. They were found in David's life. They are all found in heaven. Are we together now? It is impossible to talk about the glory of God, ignoring his wisdom, ignoring his power, ignoring his wealth. And I hope you know when I talk about wealth, I'm not talking of money. You never heard me say money. <laughs> because God does not use money. Are we together? So, God desires that our lives become a manifestation of his glory and experience. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is exploits in the kingdom is governed by laws l-a-w-s exploits in the kingdom the ability to command results the ability to produce extraordinary results in and through your life is governed by spiritual laws and broadly speaking please let me have your attention broadly speaking there are two kinds of knowledge that every believer must interact with if you want your life to produce broadly speaking number one the Bible calls it the knowledge of him you need to know God number two you need to understand the principles of the kingdom so broadly speaking these are the two kinds of knowledge that you must have in experience number one the knowledge of him God himself when you begin your journey to exploit and you start by learning principles, you will live a defeated life. The believer's journey starts with God before his ways. Are we together? God is greater than his ways. Your passion must be driven to his person first before his ways. Are we together now? Yes. So the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32b, he says, but the people that do know their God. He never said the people that do know his ways. He never said the people that do know his principles. Because in order of divine priority, the journey to a believer's exploit starts with things. Are we together? Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next verse, please. Verse 3. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Again, through the knowledge of him. Say the knowledge of him. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Jesus is praying. And he says, this is life eternal. That means the administration of eternal life, tapping into the riches that come with eternal life, is predicated upon the knowledge of the only true God and Jesus himself, his son whom he has sent. So most believers have not paid the price to know God. Listen, please. Your confidence, the audacity that you receive in this kingdom is a product of your knowledge of God. You cannot stand before mountains and just speak, ladies and gentlemen. No. 
your encounter must be bigger than your obstacles. Otherwise, you cannot prevail. Hallelujah. Exploits does not start with the pursuit of things. No. You try to learn faith without God. You try to learn principles without God. You will be frustrated eventually. The correct protocol to accessing grace for exploits starts with your passion and your hunger for God. Look at it in the life of the disciples. When he called them, he said, follow me. Not follow it. Follow me. I am the one who will make you. It cannot make you. No. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me. And he began to make them. Teaching them about himself and teaching them about the kingdom. Eventually they translated from ordinary men and they become fearful apostles. These are they that turn the world upside down. Hallelujah. Yes. The knowledge of God. The God that you know is the God that you present to your generation. Did you hear what I said? The God that you have encountered. Moses, you cannot talk to Pharaoh about a God who you have not met. And Moses said, who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? Pharaoh had encountered other gods. But you claim to be different. What makes you different? What do I need to know about you? Can I tell you? The labor that many people go through trying to learn, with all due respect, the labor that many people go through trying to learn faith is because most people do not have an encounter with God. Most of those who walked in faith learned about faith as a teaching minimally. It was their encounter that brought such confidence. Who taught David about faith? He encountered God and he said, please Saul, allow me to take this man. And they said, whose son are you? What kind of boldness is this? The veterans of war in Israel, they stood afraid of this beast. And here comes a teenager saying, I, I can take him. Come on. And the king said, all right, take my armory. He said, no, I was not trained with this. And he stood before Goliath with a sling. And Goliath said, am I a dog? You, you've not heard about what I do? And he said, you come to me with your spears and your bows, but I come to you in a name. I met someone in the wilderness. My confidence is based on what he told me. What has God told you that makes you to not run away from challenges? The God that you know, man of God, especially if they can show you a picture, an evidence. Even when you don't believe, you are forced to respect. If this man knows this man, then I need to be careful. But the people that do know their God. Life will ask you who sent you. Are we together? You believe what I'm saying? Yes. You see, when you know the God of the Bible, then you will know what he can do. I'm just opening you up to see this first dimension of knowledge. Now, for many, the average believer, the moment you talk about the knowledge of God, they shut down immediately. But when you tell them, receive breakthrough, I'm not against that. I'm not being sarcastic. Receive breakthrough or look, let things change in your life. They say, amen. You are going to live a weak and defeated life, perpetually chasing after people. Real strength in the kingdom is derived from an encounter. Real strength. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Strong. You can look at 2024 and say you will become as I have called you. And it will ask you based on what? Why should I obey you? Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hallelujah. Fear died in my life. Honestly. When I had an encounter with God. Don't mistake in this for pride. It's the truth. One of the ways that you conquer fear. Is to truly have an encounter with God. When you know who God is. There are certain. Most of us the fear that is in our life. Is not a demonic attack. It's a state of ignorance that was taken advantage of by demon spirits. Are we together now? The knowledge of God is threefold. 
let me just say this if you want to know God I hope you know you can know God as mysterious as God looks he wants to be known and there are three ways according to scripture we study God number one his nature and character the first way to know God is to study his nature and his character are we learning now I'm not going to talk much about that I just want to give you this as as a revelation when you know the nature and the character of God there are some things you will believe about God and there are other things you will stop believing immediately are we together if you get a text now in your phone and some scammer says I am Reverend Sam come and meet me somewhere because you know his nature and his character you know what he can do that becomes the basis of what you believe and what you do not believe you will hardly become a victim of foolishness in the presence of knowledge are we together now yes so you study the character of God to know God for instance if let me use a gentleman can I have any gentleman just come anyone come 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 now watch this let me use this gentleman everyone look at this assuming I want to send you to give him something and you do not know him you have never met him I can use his nature and immediately the fear of doom leaves your life that it is true that God is just but his mercy triumphs over his judgment it doesn't put you in a state of carelessness but it becomes a consolation that you are walking with a God that loves you number two when God demands that you love him and serve him he also lets you know that the character of love is that he gives and no one out gives God so you don't feel cheated giving your all to God because there is a consolation in your work with God he's not a cruel king who is just asking you to give offering give money worship him come to church and there is nothing in place for you no that is against the very nature of love you are my God now it's not a special number it's a revelation you are my God for you are my God ah. you are my God do you believe this I'll forever be chasing after you. Since I found that you are my God, I'll be chasing after you. That I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. So when men ask you, why do you look like a fool serving God? What is in it for you? You tell him, number one, I serve him because I love him. But number two, there is such a plan in his dealings with me. Are we together now? He gave his son and you have no idea of the exceeding great and precious promises he has for me. I serve him because I love him, but I do not serve him in vain. There are consolations. The disciples came to ask him a question. We have given all to follow you. It is not in his nature to rob men. No. You do not serve God and go down. This becomes your motivation to serve even in church. Supervised or not, you spend your life like a fool and allow the naysayers laugh and say sorry for the remaining part of their lifetime as they see God begin to showcase through your life what it means to be loved by God. Is someone learning? Many believers are in church. But they do not know God they cannot identify God and so the devil plays with their minds and he gives them all kinds of vain descriptions of God and they are tempted to believe until they believe that God is cruel until they believe that God is a fraudster and then they extend that pain to everyone who represents him are we together the Lord is loving, He is gracious. Go and read your Bible and see what He did with ordinary men who dared to trust Him. Whoever told you that this God that you serve is He there to scam you to what end, to what profit? He was God before your arrival. 
What glory does he get leaving you cheated? That you gave him your life, you gave him your finances, you gave him your all. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The Bible says, but our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, that it walketh in us a far exceeding weight of glory. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. Oh. I will worship Ammons, respectfully speaking, that are just a replacement for the bankruptcy of knowing God. They will not be necessary if we press to know God. Thank you. There are three dimensions. Let me just talk about one. Are you ready? Hmm. How do I know God? By the study of his nature and his character. When you study the nature of God, you will understand what God can do. Read the entire Psalm 103. I have read my Bible by the privilege of God's grace. There is no chapter in the Bible that captures a display of God's nature like Psalm 103. Psalm 103 is the richest capture of God's nature and character in my study. It says, just give us verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Then the Bible lists five of them. There are five of those benefits. Number one, who forgives your sins. Number two, who heals your diseases. Number three, who delivers your soul from destruction. Number four, who mercies honor. Number five, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Now when you begin to read from verse three, the Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. And right to the end, it describes for you the nature of God. Let me give everybody assignment in righteousness. Go and study Psalm 103. Devoid. Start this year knowing the God you are serving. Know the one who is leading you so you are not confused. Are we together? Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.